Hello, welcome to another episode of Tigers, Tigers, blah, 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 uh, with me, Luke Flanagan, and my co-host is Rich Walker. What's up, Luke? You sound sad. <laughs> we'll get to that, mate. A <laughs> <laughs> couple of things that never change. Uh, well, actually, there's too, too many things that never change around here, uh, but we'll get to that. Um, two things I do want to mention before we get going very quickly is our gratitude for Danny Johnson and Hull City Ladies, who are our sponsors. And also uh, our partners, Fan Hub Football, which is the app that recognises and rewards fans for supporting their football club. So go um, to the link in our bio and go and have a look. Sign up. Uh, the episode today, Rich, is not the normal setting, is it? It is not, no, because uh, unlike Grant McCann, oh. we are adaptable <laughs> to <Oof>. the situation. <laughs> <laughs> he's got him. He's got him there. Punches. No punches, oh, yeah. Paul. Um, yeah, so it's it's going to be a little bit different, but um, we're going to get to lots of your tweets. They're really appreciated. I tweeted earlier on, and I've had lots of activity, so I can rely on City fans for that. Um, people are mad. Yeah, people are not happy. Neither are we. So we're going to go through that, and there'll be some talking points, I'm sure, over the next... Uh, well, I don't know how long this will last, but it's going to be... It's going to be a rant. How long have you got? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I am yeah, drinking. So, am I. so, so it, you it know, may, it may take a turn for a worse, but I don't know. <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll take a little break and then we'll we'll get going with our our discussions of of uh, well the shambles of our club. <laughs> <laughs> be right back. Before we, well, I mean, this is this is the start. I don't know if if uh, if you want to mention anything before we do go into all these tweets, Rich, because th- there's a lot that I can get through, and I'm very grateful to our listeners for all of these. I'm sure we've got things that we can say off the back of all of these comments. But what what was the uh, what's the overriding feeling you've got 24 hours later? Um, they're all negative. <laughs> <laughs> they're all negative. Um. I... <laughs> I said before the game yesterday that I thought it was a case of it being shit or bust. But yeah. I still feel that way. I think mm-hmm. I think we've left ourselves too much to do. Two wins out of three games, looking at the way we've played since January, it's not gonna happen. It is not gonna happen. You've got in Wigan and Luton our next two teams that we faced, you know, yeah. two sides who are you know, showing some fight and, and mm-hmm. performing vastly better in the in the form table than we are. Yeah, Wigan especially, and, they've, they've been excellent considering all of the things that are happening to them right now. He, uh, well, yeah. And you know, Luton, Luton, I mean, they look dead Luton, and buried at different points and they've shown fight to get back in. New manager bounce. They might, they, they might still go down, you know, Luton, um, mm. but they, they, they're doing something that we're not and that's, that's scrapping for their lives. Mm. Whereas we've had this thing all... Ever since, you know, Bowen and, and Grzycki left and we had that horrendous performance against Brentford, we've had this kind of state of denial of, of being in a relegation fight and it still mm. looks like the players are struggling to get to grips with it. Um, so, you know, I, I, unfortunately, I can't, I can't see a way out of it for us. I think I think we will be relegated. Um, Do you know, I, I yeah. don't make a particularly doom and gloom prediction, but on current form, we'll finish bottom. We? I, I mean, it's it's it's. I think it, everybody else is is um, you know doing the points, damnedest. To, yeah. yeah, you know, and, and even sort of looking back now at the the Middlesbrough win, and you know, yeah, we were euphoric afterwards, and I, it's still mad. You know the, what? If I, thought, I was thinking this, if Mil- Wilkes didn't score that goal. There would have been a similar reaction then to what happened yesterday. Exactly. I mean, that's that's what I was going to say. Um, was that you know we were all euphoric, but it's it certainly wasn't because of the nature of the performance. It was it mm. was just down to the fact that we won. Um, yeah. It was still a dreadful game. Um, so, you know, three points is three points in that case. But if 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 there was any momentum to be taken from it, it's completely gone. You know, with mm. with three three defeats on the bounce. Um and yeah, West Brom there were reasons to be 
kind of encouraged. But you know, the main thing is we can't defend. We can't. I think. I think with with West Brom, I mean, they've got some class above players. Yeah, they do. But we didn't. We didn't make them work for it. They're defending all that either. No, I mean, we showed that because we got at them exactly. So, and if a team who's twenty first, twenty second can get at you like that, then you know I think I still I speak to some West Brom fans on through social media through different writings that I do, and they're still convinced they'll they'll bottle it and the right. Brentford will go up. Um, be, you, you be rely surprised. On Pereira. You're relying on Pereira, aren't you, as a West Brom yeah. fan there because he's the only consistent one. What I've seen of Brentford this season, they look a better side. De- uh, yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, I mean, I'm just looking at the table. <clears throat> 43 points, Barnsley at the bottom. 44 points, Luton. 45 us. The only team that's worse form than us in the last five games is Birmingham. Uh-huh. Um, and obviously they got they got rid of the manager, haven't they? And they've got a caretaker in charge and they looked woeful the other day. So they're, it, it could be that Luton, it could be Barnsley, us and Birmingham because everybody else, maybe apart from Charlton in the last few games, is have shown that can actually pick up points, can't they? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even Stoke winning today, you know. It's... I know, I know that was a big one, wasn't it? It was, uh, but I mean, it was, it, I can't say it was one that I followed, you know, no, closely no. because there just doesn't seem any point. To me, it, it's almost like, when well, I was thinking we... this over the weekend as the results were going for us, you know. Yeah, because perhaps... they did on Friday night. Yeah, and, and, and even on Saturday, you know, they, they went well. For or us, a loss, I'm, yeah, Charlton loss. You're still looking at them and thinking, well, it's in, it's completely irrelevant because we mm. have just got no life in us. I mean, mm. anybody watching that yesterday would just be so discouraged because there was absolutely no bottle about the performance. No, you know, there's, no, no, there's nothing endearing from anybody, was there? No, there was no urgency. There was no kind of willingness to dig in and scrap. It was all. The only one, as I said before to you, the only one that ever showed anything was was Honeyman for his unbelievable booking. And then, I mean, you, <laughs> you, you could, I was a big fan of that, but then I wasn't as big a fan of Kevin Stewart already on a booking, flying no, in. No, I mean, that, that was, was that, it was stupid that he was a very lucky boy. I, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that. I was shocked that the ref did send him off because as soon as he went in there, I was I said to myself, oh, he's off there. Yeah. Um, so, I but mean, he's, he's, he's looked off the fight. face. Stuart, Stuart's looked off the pace ever since he came yeah. back in. He has, yeah, it's, it's true, and you can see why he wasn't picked to start with. Yeah, because um, you would pick Batty over him, wouldn't you? With that form, that's yeah, what Bat- he's done in the first few games. Batty's not been great either, so that tells no, you no. something, doesn't it? When when our main threat is Honeyman's set pieces, you've got <laughs> you've got. You've got problems. I mean, got I very little to go with, haven't you? We made a couple of decent chances. Um, the the man that suffers from a chronic lack of end product, Josh Bowler, should have scored. Oh, he should have done. But we didn't see it because I yeah. follow was too busy showing a replay of the Millwall chance. Yeah, yeah. I was watching the highlights just before we started recording. I noticed that they've um, kind of very uh, shabbily cut in a replay as if it was happening live. Into Swindlers. that, yeah. Um, but I felt he... short changed. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> Thank well, for that. I, f- I felt short changed by the entire thing, mate. But um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't just that. But it's he like, should have scored. Uh, Wilkes scored. Wilkes had a chance. Mm, I know we... had a chance. Yeah, I know they were saying Device had one off the line first half, but it, it looked a fairly comfortable clearance. And then I don't think there was any danger. I mean, that's why you no. have players on the line, isn't it? Yeah, and then Honeyman's follow up was, you know, just oh. anemic. Yeah, it was. So, you don't want Honeyman heading that, do you? He's, he's, he should be the one whipping the cross in. It should be somebody like Eves in that position. To yeah, him. I mean, it, it, whoever it was, they would have had an awful lot to do. But then it's all right saying that, you know, we had chances, but Millwall had some brilliant chances as well in the first half. Too. Oh, they could have been 4 0 up. Yeah, time, you know. And that, how many times have we had that since the restart? Yeah, but they were yeah. dragging us all over the place, you know. The, the, they look particularly dangerous in wide areas, and you can see that even before the game with the way that they were going to line up. You know, three four three that have had that have had numbers out there to be able to double up on fullbacks and create advantages, which is really where their goal came from because they yeah. drag they drag players out to the wide areas, created that that space in the middle of the pitch, and it's a brilliant strike. You know, take nothing away from him; it was a fantastic goal, but it's come from 
our inability to look at their system and say, well, maybe they're going to do that. So we should, you know, second we... minute it was he was overloaded, wasn't he? He had yeah. so much time and space because everybody had dropped in and no one was yeah. getting out to him yet again. But it was painfully obvious to me. I mean, if you got the um, the programs that they've been doing for these games. Um, mm. I was reading before the game about Millwall's tactical approach and one of the things that they highlighted was that they're flexible in their formation but one of the things they like to do is 3-4-3 and I read that and I thought well that's trouble for us if they take that approach because the last thing that we can stand up to is teams coming at us wide you know we just we abandon our fullbacks and a 3-4-3 allowed them to take were, advantage of that they and, were very similar to how Chef United have tried to to do well for themselves this year in the Premier because they've they've stuck with that and it's very much ball playing centre halves and overlapping, isn't it? Yeah, it's and then they defend as a massive unit, so yeah. you just squash any any creativity is just gone because it's all right, we'll let them have the ball because what they're going to do with it, they're going to yeah, run yeah. out of options and then we'll counter on them, and that's exactly what happened, wasn't it? Yeah, it's just completely. And, and and they they did look good as a defensive unit. Um, mm, they did. I mean, there was only one chance when when Wilkes robbed. I think it was Pierce in the first half, and then his shot was hopelessly poor. But <laughs> that was the only time where we either thought that the press that some of the players were trying to do mm. had any effect. Yeah, because after that and, they were just so comfortable playing it out from the back. It was embarrassing. They, they were, and even even second half when you know, like. A miracle happened, and we altered our formation. <laughs> well, we're going to have to talk about that now. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to come to it now, aren't we? Like mm. when we went three four three to match them up, they'd have been comfortable with that because although it matched them up, they were in the lead. <laughs> they didn't need to score, did they? They could just go. It's all right. We'll just no. see this out, lads. It's fine. Yeah, so it's like, well, you you nullify us all you like because <laughs> you're not offering anything in attack. Um, and then after the game. You know, David Burns has like took McCann to task really, um, yeah, over his, you know, unwillingness or inability, whatever you want to call it, to change our four three three system. Mm. All right, he changed it second half, but but Burns he took him took him to task about it, and, and McCann's response was so it was almost insulting to fans and. and Everybody listening to it who actually had know something about football. Yeah, and you know, all right, we're not all as highly qualified as um, Grant McCann mm. um, in in coaching, and you know, much much lesser football experience than he has. Mm. Um, but to say something as facile as systems don't win games, putting the ball in the back of the net does. It's like mm. I was there was a silent rage building in me. When yeah. I did that. It's like, just cop on mm. to yourself there, Grant. <laughs> Catch yourself on, as they would say in his homeland. Yeah, you're not in any position to be getting smart with people. <laughs> it was almost arrogance from him. Yeah. Because he it's said like... one thing that was, I'm the manager of this football club, so I'll take the brunt, no problem. And I almost admire him for standing up for the players. But the players aren't playing for him, clearly, that either... The, either He's lost them, or he's not giving them the instructions of what to do enough so they don't know what to do. I don't know yeah. which it is, but when he said, you know... Would you would you think that the players would lose a little bit of belief in him? I would. If you yeah. were playing for somebody that it's like, you've won one game since the 1st of January, and he doesn't alter his approach. We've got six points. Yeah, as, as, a, as a player... Since thinking, New Year's Day. As a player, you would be thinking... This guy going out, yeah. I mean, we've all you know, played at football at some level, surely. If you're on a run like that, you go, mate, manager's chatting shit here. Like, give someone else a go. Or he's got no idea of what he's saying. You can't say that the players don't have these feelings. Whether they air them or not is maybe different. And maybe that's why Terrell was left out. Because if there was ever a game and a second half crying out for some creativity in the middle, um, it was... We we're missing old Spanish John in there, weren't we? Well, yeah, but you know, it, it wasn't a game for him, so and that as well confused <laughs> me. What sort of player does not play some games? You know, unless... what does he mean? I mean, I know he said that Millwall were playing uh, a physical game. He said something like that, didn't he? 
But he did, but they weren't either. I mean, yeah, the, it wouldn't have been him that bore the, bore the brunt of it because it was the front three where the, the, the three centre-backs were really trying to intimidate. Yeah, but it wasn't it... any different than any other game. It wasn't, you know, if, you, if you're looking for worse tackles, I'll point you towards Wigan versus Brown, Barnsley. And uh, was it Anthony um, Robinson spiralled somebody in the air? And that, that, that if, if that's what he was expecting, we didn't get that. So you, you you judge each case on its merit, and you go right. Second half, we're switching it. Then I'll take one of them midfielders off, and, and John's going in the hole, and he'll do his magic because yeah. we had absolutely no creativity. It doesn't matter yeah. how much Honeyman runs about because over the last few games, I've really become a fan of him, and his set pieces delivery has been good when we've lost Kane. But you can't rely on George Honeyman for the creation because it's no, not you... his sort of game, is it? He's not you that can't. player. You can't. And the other thing with with not playing Sorrell and 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 then saying that he didn't think that he would, it, you know, not in so many words, but it, effectively what we communicated was that Sorrell wouldn't be able to stand up to a physical game. If if at any point he wants to bring Sorrell into the starting lineup again, which I would suggest he did, um... well, we've got three games left, and he should be playing every fucking one of them in my eyes. Yeah, exactly for me, but. You've then given everybody that we have to play the heads up that hang on if we get Don't tight, fancy at him. Yeah, if we get tight on Sorrell and maybe stick a couple on him, mm. then he might will. I'm not sure that that's the case physically. You know, we've seen that he doesn't have the greatest record with injuries, but actually, no, he's, he's not. He's not been. You know, I expected. You know, for all he's our most creative and flair player. I was expecting when he came back and he played against Charlton maybe to go off after half an hour and we think, oh, there's John Crockett again. But it's not been yeah. like that and he's played quite a lot of game time. Yeah, he's with... been fine. But he's the... not had any effect. He went down. Was it, was it against West Brom? He went down. He got straight back up again. Played yeah. pretty much a full night. So I got, don't think whether he's got hooked be at half time against against Bristol City, despite being one of our best players. I mean, he was the one that ran that midfield and looked like we were actually going to get through something there. And I know we scored after he went off. That's irrelevant because it was a set piece again. Mm. And I'm still baffled from set pieces why we look so fucking shoddy because we've got height organization isn't it it's just it i just think mccann is so far out of his depth because his one tactic was at the start of the season play with three up get it high to pressing. either grzicki high pressing get grzicki or bowing on the ball and they'll either assist either of them or score and that got us to eighth or whatever we were on new year's day it's six what, six months later, seven months later, and we've got six more points. And we're <laughs> and we're, we're we're next we're nearly bottom of the table, mate. Like, yeah. What the fuck? He's he's been found out and he doesn't know what he's doing in my eyes. The other thing is with his inflexibility is that it's not just on how he lines us up from the start of a game, it's with his substitutions as well. Just, every, oh, I was really like, mate, it, do, it doesn't matter up. which striker plays. You know that they're going to get the hook after sixty minutes for the other striker. It's just it's like whichever one starts is awful. Merry go round. Yeah. It's like, well, okay then. We've we've switched it, so it's three four three. How about going three five two? What about putting one other striker in there and taking one of the defenders off? And... It's it's like it can change the personnel, but never the approach. It really is, and even when he switched the tactics, he then won't change it again. Because if you looked at it when he did change it. You know, we nullified any real threats. They didn't look like scoring second half, did they? Well, no, no, they didn't. But we looked really vulnerable at 4-3-3. So, OK, fair play. He's changed it. I don't know what made him change. Maybe the players went, look, Gaffer, we need to go 4-3-3 because we're getting done up here. And maybe he just thought, fuck it, I'll do it. But then you go, right, OK, so in, if the midfield is matched in the, in the middle, why don't you drop one of them? in there, so we've got a five, and then we've got two up front, because why would you book Keen Lewis Potter again? He's not a wide player, is he? He needs to be playing off somebody, so you have... That, that was the other thing for me, like bringing on... Eves, even. Or bringing on a 19-year-old kid. As and, the, as the saviour, put the, put that pressure on him. He doesn't need that pressure. With, He's still with trying the to greatest, find his feet in professional football. With the greatest of respect to Keen Lewis Potter, he's a far better footballer than I ever was, and ever will be, <laughs> which, which isn't difficult. But 
when he's making excuses about not playing his most creative midfielder in John Terrell and saying, I didn't think it was the type of game that suited him, why then is it okay for a 19-year-old kid to come on? What Can I just mention we've also got James Scott on the bench that he didn't bring on yet? He brought yeah, up as early. Yeah. What we don't know. That? We don't know. Did, did McDonald... Uh, did McDonald get a knock? We don't know. But even if uh, he did, right? And I understand if he's if he's got a knock, you take him off and yeah, you put a centre back on. But make a change but, at the same time. Yeah. He crippled himself. You can't make another change then. Yeah, no, you can't. And what got me about that was, and some people have suggested it would have happened anyway. The longer the game went on, Tafazoli ended up playing as as a makeshift forward. I know that teams do that out of desperation. You put a forward up or a yeah, defender it's, up It's front. a cup final when you're one down and you want to yeah, it's, it. yeah. it's It's a desperation move. And I appreciate that that happens in other games, but the optics of it are so poor when you've declined to make an attacking substitution, a natural attacker at the same <laughs> yeah. time as you're bringing a centre-back on. And that same centre-back then goes up front. The optics of that are so poor. Whether or not it would have happened anyway. It looks horrendous. <laughs> it looks awful. When you've got fans who are already pissed, pissed off. off because you're not bringing an attacker on, it's like, you know... Let's stick him up as another, like an emergency centre-forward like he used to yeah. do with Jagielka or Schmeichel when the United were losing or something like that. I was going beetroot red. <laughs> Just like, what the I fuck? think I, I, at that point, when I was trying to write my match report, I would. I just shouted, "That's banter, that!" But nobody was in. <laughs> was nobody in the house. It was just to myself, like Grant McCann's banter. Look at that. He's yeah. not even bringing John on. He's not even bringing Scott on. What's he doing? Yeah, let's put Taffers early on, and then just lump it up, and let's give free kicks away, like we always do. Yeah. Um, I think. Oh God, I'm getting annoyed if, again. I know. <laughs> Just, just so we simmer a little bit, I think what's a good idea? If we go to the next section, I want to read some tweets out to you. Right, so, tweets. I said, I'm sure you saw the tweet earlier, Rich. I did. I've been glued to my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I just put about, there might be a lot of expletives tonight, which there's been a few, but not that many so far, um, that we were just abandoning the usual structure for the show, and then anybody who wanted to tweet us with your thoughts, do so. Um, And, well, I'd say she's a regular guest now, Bobby Agraf, because we'll probably get her on at some other point as well. Probably a relegation party commiseration (laughs) episode. (laughs) She said, um, because she was the first to reply, disappointed but not surprised. Can't see us winning any of the last three games. And defeat to Luton would be agonising. The players have worked hard, um, but yesterday seemed to lack direction completely. Don't start me on the can. So, I can, I, especially that part where she says the players have worked hard, but yesterday they just seemed to lack direction. I think that's pretty spot on, in fairness. Yeah. It was something, I can said it two or three times in his post match interview, didn't he, that the, the lads are trying. And, mm. and somebody said to me on Twitter, the only thing that they're trying is my patience. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I thought that was a fairly good shout. Um, it's yeah. it's not for lack of effort, is it? And I don't think... No, because it's, it's not... They don't just stand there and let them go by. No. I just no. think that we've got a squad that's woefully inept. And we all know why that is. It's almost... I know that we've, we've had a few responses to your tweet saying, you know, that it goes beyond Grant McCann, you know, our yes. problems go beyond Grant McCann. But it's almost so obvious to everyone who supports City that it's, in a way, it's not worth discussing. Mm. That's kind of how I feel about that. It's it's sort of like, what are you going to say about it again? Yeah. Um. And, you know, we're of the same mind of everybody else. Mm. So it's it's, I don't know. Just you know, it does. It, it it goes beyond Grant McCann. It goes beyond the players. Um, but what else when... can we say about it? Because we've had you know, I mean, national media have covered us in the last three weeks. Yeah, about what the problem is, and we know what the problem is, don't we? But and if it... you don't know, you can ask Ehab. 
<laughs> well, if you don't know, you can ask Phil Buckingham because it's him who stopped him going in. Um, I do think Burnsley's probably going to be lucky if he lets, gets let back in for the Luton game. But then again, is he going to try to be all dictatorial with letting Ray Umberside back in? I don't know because there's a contract I, in there. And I don't know. I thought Burnsley was strong, but he didn't overstep a mark. But No, but Mac- McCann did. He was very prickly. From the get go, I thought. And, and in a way, you can understand that. You can understand it him being prickly. He can, but um, he needs he needs to agree that because all he said was, "Well, that was awful," and yeah, it was, wasn't it? Was. it? He wasn't saying anything that was incorrect, and it, he uh, McCann and, started and, spouting about that's your opinion. And to be it's fair, it's not if, my opinion; it's fact because I watched it for ninety minutes, Grant. <laughs> it was shit. And if if McCann had come on and tried to convince anybody that there have been merits to that performance, then he only makes himself look daft. Yeah. And at, at one stage, I remember Burnsy saying, look, I like you, Grant, as a person, but I just, I'm questioning a lot of your decisions. And I think yeah. that was a fair point to put it. It's not a personal attack. It's what are you going to do for the team? That made me laugh out loud when, you know, McCann was saying about the players, you know, they're trying and... He was happy. What to do you take... want us to do? Go pack up and go home. Well, yeah, but when when Burnsy said to him, it's like, well, I'm not questioning the players. I'm not, not questioning their effort. I'm questioning you. It's like, yes. I laughed out loud. <laughs> I think I I made this noise. Oh, yeah, <laughs> zing! It was like <laughs> <laughs> he was on one yesterday. It was old Burnsy, and I yeah, liked it. Did well. To be honest. He it did well. That, it needed that. I do think it would have come three games before if we hadn't have got anything against Middlesbrough. Because it was as bad a performance as that. I know he won, but that goal from Wilkes masked a horrific performance that was just as bad yesterday, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tony Gold on Twitter says, I agree with McCann on one thing. It's unlucky to keep conceding early goals. Not having that. Um, Just occasionally they should miss. (laughs) So it's like the team should uh, should do us a favour and just miss those early goals early on. Don't agree. Um, I don't agree that it's unlucky. I think it's bad defending all round, in fairness. Yeah, I mean, what, we conceded early against Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough was a pen. Yeah, West and it Brom was, was, it was very... awful defending. It was it awful was, defending. Yeah. Yeah. West Brom, awful defending. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. not luck. It's not no, it luck. Isn't. No, you and make your own luck, don't you? Over the course of a season, you do. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've conceded two worldies in the last two games, but we're, I mean, one of them, I swear, I swear, I know we're not really, I mean, we said before, didn't we, the Bristol game kind of pales into insignificance, really. It feels like an age ago. It really it does. It really does, but I remember putting on Twitter when I was watching it, is this ref moving it back 35 yards for fucking Patterson's free kick? Because it looked like you were 15 yards back, not 10. I know he'd, he'd didn't even need them. If the wall had been eight yards, it still bent yeah. round it and went in because yeah. there was no Wouldn't way of saving that. But anyway, um, so that was that. Was that. Um, we've also got, well, Hull City KSA, which is the um, Saudi Arabian supporters group, <laughs> just says two words, Alam out, which I think is echoed by a lot of people further down. Um Jordan Tyson 92's tweets us quite a lot, says, I think everyone has the same thoughts nowadays. The blame, uh, where is it? The blame uh, has to stop at the top, but McCann doesn't help things. Yesterday's decisions were baffling, which we've kind of been through. Lack of Terrell and lots of other things. Yeah. Lee Walker says, we're doomed. The club is in free fall. Can't see us getting a result from the next three games. No fight, no passion, no leaders on the pitch. We're like a rudderless ship. Um, Hull City Data, who we've obviously we tweet a lot, actually, me and you, and as the, the Tigers account, he's, he's quite active and he's he's good to talk to on there. He says, just lost lads, to be honest. Loved Grant McCann mm. when he joined. Felt like he was a fair manager and just what we needed, but feel like he's rolled over and had his tummy tickled by Ehab instead of having some serious backbone to change things. Transfer selection all on him through Ehab. Sad state of affairs. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Mm. He's usually quite you know, spot on, to be fair. I was, you know, I felt positive about McCann when he came in. I did. It seemed like a forward-thinking move, which is, mm. it's one of those things that I think sometimes in in the situation that we found ourselves in, you you look at things without 
almost acknowledging the wider context of, of the way that the, the club is, is heading and, and, and how it's been run. Mm. And and the move from a can seemed like a forward looking one. Yeah. So when Did when well they, at Donny. Yeah. You know, good young manager. Burgeoning reputation. And yeah. and for, for a while you're thinking, well that you look for these things and it's it's like when you really think about it, you acknowledge that probably you know, you weren't thinking straight anyway, because if you really thought about it, you would know that th- there is nothing forward-looking about Hull City at the minute. No. Um, so I felt the same when he came in. It's like, that is a positive move, um, you know, bringing in somebody whose reputation is on the rise. And it's just gone, you know, for anybody, and, and, and again, Burnsy said this yesterday to him in his interview, this is not an easy club to manage. Um, yeah, and he's doing his own reputation a lot of harm. Yeah, yeah. Isn't he? Doesn't matter if he's going to get another job after us. People will look at this and go, "Look how shit he did there." Yeah, and and to me, it's like Matt Dean was saying to somebody on the radio yesterday. Um, Would you agree that he hasn't been given the tools to do the job? <laughs> and yes, yeah, he hasn't been given the tools. But if he honestly thought when he came in, that he was going to get the tools to the job. There's a lot of naivety there, if that was the case. Yeah, he's he's dafter than his tactics make him look if yeah. he thought that he was going to get <laughs> if he thought he was going to get investment yeah. um, and, and, and not have kind of the his best players moved on mm. when when a fee came for them. Yeah. So to me, to me, that's I mean, them two were always going to go, weren't they? In yeah. The, he, the club he, was in. He can't rely on it as a defence and, and a reason for why they're not performing under him because it was an inevitability. So but unless... also, he's, he's had that time. So, start of season, the first half of the season, he had one tactic and Bowen and Grzycki are too good for this division. So, we had two, you know, for, this, for the championship, two very, very good players. Yeah. And those were the ones that carried us. You know, their backs must have been killing and everything <laughs> after the games because they really did didn't they when when uh, Grzycki I mean I know a lot of people slagging but I always liked Grzycki I just thought on his day he was world class when he wanted to be but uh, people were too quick to criticise him in my eyes I just thought he was a really good mm. good player but obviously Bowen was always the one that was going to get the headlines I, I mean because... you know Bowen's goals speak for themselves but the thing that yeah. I think we we don't hear about often enough is that Bowen's work rate going the other way as well yeah, because he he would cover for you know the flaws in in the system sometimes. Yeah, well, where... he, had the, he had the fitness and the drive to go up. He was like just a Duracell, wasn't he? he just up yeah. and down. He he would provide the good good cover for his fullback. Um, yeah, in, and if in... if your fullback's Lee high, you know, you need to cover him less than if your fullback's Angus McDonald, who's a centre back, or yeah, Matthew or Reece Penton's Burke. also or Reece Burke, who's also a centre back, or you know. Study. Anybody else that they put in? Well, it's Leo de Silva now. I mean, yeah, he was a oh. right wing back in the end, wasn't he? And we we'd always we'd muted that four weeks ago, didn't we? That he'd played there before, and maybe yeah. a change of system could do this. But we just said at the time, didn't we? He's not going to change it. It's pointless talking about it because it's going to be it's going to take something gargantuan to change that system, and he did change it. But there was no nous with it again. You want that tweak in there, don't you? You need the extra little midfield, or you need to up top something different that they don't. That you know, two two forward players against three centre backs, and that the maybe a little bit. It certainly know, didn't. It didn't, but... it, it didn't put our attacking or creative players in a position to no. to hurt Millwall. No, it it wasn't a move that that was that was brought about because we wanted to score a goal with it. No, it just looks so aimless and. Yeah, it was needed. It, mm. We needed to do something to counteract the fact that Millwall we could, get, should have done it first so half. Half. Because if it if it had been really unlucky, we'd have been four 0 down at half time and had to change the system. Then why not change it? There's nothing wrong with changing the system after five minutes if you've got clear instructions to your players. Lee Boy did it against us for Charlton. He went drop Prattley on Torral because he's going to score. Oh, he didn't score. Money, yeah. Because yeah, because he, he needed man marking. Because when Terrell floats about, he's dangerous, and they thought and they knew that straight away. So he changed it, and then Grant went. Oh, I wonder why Terrell's not doing very well now. 
it's almost like he can't see what's in front of him. The, the next the next few tweets, so there's one that's a little bit, um, well, I'll read it to you. You ready? Yeah. This is by account, an account that's at, and I said no, no, no. Right. Ehab will invest 100 million in players and guide us safely back to the Premier League. And Grant McCann will finish the season with clean sheets in each game. And att- attractive attacking football will be played. Maguire, Robertson and Bowen will return. Come join me here on Fantasy Island. Has <laughs> <laughs> he got where a... it was going there, didn't Has he got a brochure? <laughs> that sounds fucking lovely. I'd love to go there. Do I need a passport? <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably a blue one. Um... <laughs> I wondered where that was going. <laughs> yeah, and I was reading it, going, "What is going on?" I was like, "Oh yes, very good, very droll, very witty, <laughs> like that." So yeah, cheers for that. And then Daniel Moa says, um, four three three under other managers, Adkins has looked sound defensively. My biggest concern is how clueless the team are in this system. Defense when under threat snaps so easily, and players just roam through us with ease. It's a fair point. Mm. We yeah. we have played four three three a lot under a lot of managers, haven't we? But it is I think, this... I think quite a lot of the time though under Atkins it wasn't strictly like four three three when it was more like four two three one maybe. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's with Campbell you know, up top and then that sort of tweak further forward, wasn't he? So Yeah. It's a whole different kind of ball game really. Um And that's the thing, your defensive shape, it's you know, very often a four three three isn't strictly a four three three. No, it's often a four five one. Yeah, really. in, in the it same way when you're on when you're in possession, when you're out of possession, really you should be playing two different formations depending on the players you've got. Yeah, in the same way your, your game plan. The same way that like a three four three like Millwall played is not always a three four three. But the trouble no. is that we don't make these changes in game to manage situations. No. Um few more here. Richard Haystead says, my thoughts will be similar, no doubt, is it in response to what we were saying. Um, we are all thinking the same here. A painful time right now. Can anyone see a win on the horizon? To which I just put no. Yeah. <laughs> which I couldn't. And obviously other people have said that. Um, Tom Griffin, who's uh, Jono Tom, says, problems lie deeper than what's on the surface, unfortunately. Terrell would have started, but it wouldn't surprise me if there was a clause in his contract that states his wages go up after X amount of games. Um, interesting take on it. And then it says simply at the end, McCann should have walked after Stoke away. No hope. So that's that one. Uh, lots of people say no to Ral. Um, and then Harry Hainstock, who I think has his own podcast, actually, you name Rich. Yes, he does. Um, yeah. A 22 grand pod for anybody that is a fan of early noughties indie. Uh, I was listening to that yesterday. Actually, there's been some excellent stuff on there. Uh, their interviews with uh, the Cribs have been brilliant. So, highly recommend that 22 yeah. gram pod. I knew Harry had his. I knew you'd know more about it than me because it's more kind of your thing. But uh, big plug for Harry with that. Um, he just said, "Do you think another manager will get more out of this team, or would get more out of this team?" Yes. Um, yes, I believe they I, would because they'd be yeah. more pragmatic. Yeah, I think they'd look at what they've got and go, well, we need this this formation. Um, and then we come up against the, the team you're playing, you go, right, well, they're going to play this, so we'll go with this approach. And I just even, think rather than just stick with the same fucking team all the time, even uh, if formation. Even if he's been told that it's 4-3-3 and that is the whole City way, I believe that other managers would hmm. manage situations in games better. Yeah. We haven't seen it's been all season. It's not just been when we've lost Bowen and Grzycki, it's been no, all it season where there's been games some... we haven't managed them situations properly. And one of the things that's bugged me is that we've we don't have a we're not resolute. We've got no respect for a point. <laughs> and a, yeah. a, what what I mean by that is sometimes playing for a draw or not playing for a draw but saying we will not be beaten. Yes. Can, you can create a foundation on that from which you can then go and win games, but we haven't had that mm. all year. We haven't. Yeah. And and I think that's shown in, firstly, how open we've been and how many defeats we've had because where games are, are tight and we've seen the it Barnes, recently. Barnsley one at home strikes as kind of an example of what Yeah, or, or Swansea at home. Swansea or at home, yeah. Huddersfield away always comes to mind. There's so many games where we've 
Was that the one where we were nil nil, and then he took, and, and then he he went, he went gung ho, and yeah, we ended he put up, we, like two strikers on for the first time in his life. We ended up getting back, and we were losing three nil or something. Yeah, I mean Huddersfield are excellent, you know, yeah. but it, that's been symptomatic of the the greatest problems for me. Rather than saying okay, at seventy minutes we have what we, we hold what we have, mm. so the points better than nil. Yeah, your first instinct is not to get beat, which. As we've seen with you know a lot of the successful seasons that we've had, if you set your stall out not to get beat first, and mm. the longer you stay in games, you don't know what can happen. But if yeah. you make yourself so open that you, you find it impossible to defend as, as games get stretched, very often you'll come away with nothing. And we've been beat in a lot of games like that where we just haven't reacted and said, okay, point. Mm. We'll get a point out of this. If we even had two, three extra points from draws this season, we'd be in a much be... healthier situation now. Look look at the three points we should have had against Birmingham. Yeah. That's a good example. Yeah. Because then we'd be level on points with them and we wouldn't yeah. be in the bottom three, would we? Just little things like that. It's fine margins, isn't it? But you could go through a lot of games this season and say well, didn't you, in the previous episode, we said from winning positions, we've surrendered 17 points. Yeah, I've not got the stat in front of me, but it was a lot. I'm sure it was that, but I think we then worked out that actually we'd be pretty much where Millwall are, which is just outside the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were, I think there was 18 points difference between the two of us at, at the turn of the year. Mm. Yeah. So... I'm just going to look to see if there's any uh, any other late additions to these tweets. But obviously, thank you for everybody who's done this. Um, it's, uh, it's usually a good conversation starter. Um, uh, David Batty, uh, who's just Hull City underscore PFA, just says Taff as a sub, <laughs> which we have covered, but still looks more and more baffling the more you kind of think about it, doesn't it? Yeah. Dave? Um, I mean, it's it's about as baffling as David Batty taking a penalty against Argentina at the World Cup in 1998. But... Or oh, Gareth Southgate <laughs> taking one <laughs> against Germany in 1996. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's that David Batty, though, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> no, because he'd be leads through and through, and his his profile pictures are him with the city shirt on. So I don't think that I don't think the David Batty actually liked football, did he? Don't think so. Not that yeah. I'm aware of. Yeah, he said he said it was just a profession. I'm sure that was him. Yeah, I think you're right. I'm sure I remember reading that. <clears throat> Last bit. Obviously, we're going to look forward to... Well, I say look forward to. <laughs> um, we are going to... teeth. Yeah. We'll look ahead. To the <laughs> game. There's an important I think better, distinction. I think it's better wording. To be honest, yeah. Um, but I just wanted to. There was. I just need to try and find a tweet that I'm referring to. I don't necessarily want to name the guy who I then re- replied to because it did. Um, it did kind of annoy me slightly. Um, in the aftermath, I should explain the context to this. In the aftermath of the game, um, somebody had tweeted last night that uh, Josh McGuinness was was out for a drink on the marina. <gasps> yeah. Um, now, again, I'm not, I don't think it's necessarily fair for me to call out the guy personally because I'm not into that. I'm not, I don't want arguments with people. Um, maybe Grant McCann, I would, I would say a few things to, but I'm not for, you know, crucifying people about things, but I'm also not for letting daft things slide and not be challenging them. Because his comment after, it's, I'll read you the actual tweet. It said, Josh McGuinness is on the piss in Marina. I fucking hate this squad. Right. To which I said, and I will, I'm will. i going to go into the, some of these points. I do want your view on it as well, Rich, because I'm sure you've got one. I basically said, I retweeted it, and I said, I'd be on the piss after that. Don't blame the guy. Players weren't good enough today, but I hardly think chastising our striker is helping things. He might not have performed well today, but the club is not where it is because Josh McGuinness had a drink on Marina. <laughs> Which it isn't, is it? No. Now, what Josh McGuinness does in his own time is completely up to him. 
And I don't get, there obviously seems to be some people who agree with this guy, that how dare the players go for a drink after a bad result. I mean, what mm. what goes through people's minds when you have a shit day at work? Do you not go and grab a drink when you get home? Do you not go out somewhere and just, you know, well, ne- needs, these days you'd have to book a table, wouldn't you? Um <laughs> But, it, you know, pre-corona, you'd be like, right, shit day at work. I'm going to go meet the lads. You'd do that, wouldn't you? Yeah, just both. You'd do that. You'd, staying, go yeah. with, you'd go out with your family. You'd go out with your girlfriend, your partner, whatever. You would do something, surely, to take your mind off how either shit you played or how bad your day was or just to forget your troubles. That's what people do. Footballers are human beings at the end of the day. Why would you deny Josh McGuinness, who's actually a striker who has scored since lockdown started, uh, since lockdown, games resumed, should I say. And on the balance um, of things, being one of our best players. Yes. Um, it may not be goals that he provides, but he does do other things for the team. We've said this and we've 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 talked him up, I think, on other episodes for yeah, doing pr- things. Yeah, probably more than his, than his ability would warrant, if <clears> we're <throat> honest. But, you know, we, yeah. we, we've been grasping for positives sometimes. Yeah, I mean, he was one of your positives in one of the other episodes. Yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and deservedly think, so, you know, yeah. on, taken on a game game to game basis. He's, he's, there have been games post lockdown where he's played well. Do I think he's the best striker ever? No, no. But you would. I mean, somebody who plays for All City is he's not going to be because of lots of different reasons. But the financial limitations of things mean that we're not going to attract the caliber of players like we did under, say, Steve Bruce or like we did in the first season, even under Brownie when we was in the was in the Premier League then, you know, big contracts, big money contracts, isn't it? Even the calibre of players that we had when Phil Brown took over in 2006, I think we Very true, very true. Because we, we didn't necessarily have the same money that we spent in the Premier League, but for the for the Championship then, we did well to stay up that first season we, after we, Parkinson. We still had some proven Championship had, quality in that squad. We did. Uh, the likes yeah. of we ended up bringing in Dean Windus and we had Nicky yeah. Foster and we had you know Craig Fagan for a time. Yeah, we had I mean he, he came back ultimately eventually, didn't he? Yeah, you know, but you could you could look at that side and and say that any any member of that squad would walk into our team today mm. without yeah. difficulty. Absolutely. I mean, the only the, when they they did play, Grzycki and Bowen would be the ones where you go right, absolutely nailed on team sheet. They have to start because they're our best players. Mm. The only one now you would say have to has to be there wasn't picked on Saturday, which is is Terrell, but obviously his inj- his record with injuries. I mean, that's that's a debate for another day, anyway, isn't it? You know, yeah, it is. Whether but, or not he gets he gets in ahead of uh, Ashby and Dean yeah, Marnie. Yeah, I'm not going to go into that that one because. I mean, I don't think anyone gets in the midfield ahead of Ian Ashby for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not for me. Um, unless he's Nick Barnby. Um, they would both be in there, obviously. But if we go back to the original point I was trying to make, obviously there is a certain segment of City fans who think it's unacceptable that, that Hull City players go out and have a drink after a game. I mean, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this, but that, I mean, the, the, the term boiling my piss was used quite a lot last <laughs> night. <laughs> Because it just wound me up. I know you te- texted me at half eleven about it. <laughs> I know. I, just, I couldn't get over it. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't let it go either. It wasn't something where I could just like uh, just ignore it because it, it, I, I didn't feel like I wanted to defend Josh McGuinness because I think he's the best player ever. It was Josh McGuinness has at least tried for us since lockdown's season has, has restarted. And why why are you so bothered that he's wanting to do something that you're also doing? Because if you're out on Marina. You you're having a drink as well. Yeah, I mean, if if I'm honest, I don't think it's worth getting too wound up about. Um, the, I think what you know, I've certainly said it before, and the trouble with with social media is that just because you are able to and express an opinion doesn't mean that you should. Yeah, you, should. Yes. you know, and I, I've said it before. I stand by it. But then, like like the person that's tweeted this. Mm. You know, sometimes you put something, it's in the heat of the moment. It it he might not even really have stood by it. He's just venting. Might be misdirected. I don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't get too wound up about it. What I would say is I've seen a little bit 
on social media uh, of people tagging players or the manager in abuse, well, not abusive, but critical, borderline, angry messages. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. You make yourself look like a twat. Mm. Um, I just don't think it's warranted. I'm not saying I'm above it, because I've done it before. I've I've deleted the tweets afterwards, but, you know, it's... (laughs) It's it depends just... what you've said and who too, but when when you're tagging a player in something, yeah, sometimes yeah. it's just like you know, or oh, Malik Wilkes would be amazing goal or something, and you'd understand yeah. that, and there's nothing wrong with with doing that. But when you then sort of use it as a as an extended, yeah, otherwise like, just don't do it. It's daft. Yeah, just don't yeah. do it. Text your mate who's watched the game too. Yeah, just like me and you do, and just yeah, exactly. have a miserable conversation yeah. via text. Yeah. Um, but I, ju- I just thought that that was something I just needed to not necessarily get off my chest, but it was really something that grated me because it's not nobody should be you know, denied an option to go out if they've had a shit day, should they? If he feels comfortable enough to go into a pub at the moment after being a substitute in a game like that and just have a beer and just, just sort of relax a little bit, fair play to him. Indeed. Um, I think we need to maybe move it on to the Wigan discussion. The next game is Tuesday. Yes, Wigan Athletic away. (sighs) And uh, it comes to something when I saw a stat, if, and this is is not necessarily an if to me, but it's a when, um, if Wigan beat us and they get their 12 points taken off, they are still level with us. It's like, it's like fighting somebody with one hand tied behind their back and getting knocked out. It is. <laughs> yeah, it is, really. I mean, that's that was... I didn't realise that until I read that stat, I will say. That wasn't something I've kept an eye on and gone, ooh, if we... Because I don't really pay it, attention it, to anybody else other than City. It was something I would thought about when, when I saw that they they were going to have the 12 points deducted, I thought. Yeah. With with their form mm. and the way we've They've been had good going, form since the start of the year, haven't they? They, they? they have, you know, the last 12 matches, they're third in the form table. Mm. They've picked mm. up 25 points from the last 12 games, which is yeah. impressive, you know. It is. But yeah. it's, it's, it's promotion form just about, you know, they're on a par with Brentford. Because they've lost one of the last five and they've won three and drawn one. Yeah, I mean that's you know that's better than say that's that's better than Millwall's. So that's you know that's overall games. Their last eight matches at home, Wigan, they've played like I say eight games and won five and drawn two. So they've only lost one in their last eight at home, scoring twelve goals, conceding five. Mm. On the the reverse of that, our last eight matches away, uh, we've won none. Nobody will be surprised to hear. Shock. We've drawn two. Lost six, scored nine, conceded twenty-one. It breeds optimism, doesn't it? <laughs> well, if you were look, if you're coming here looking for optimism, you were mistaken. Yeah, but I don't think anybody who's a City fan is going to be optimistic about anything. To be honest, at the minute, I don't know. I saw somebody last night saying that uh, if we gave the job to Dean Windus, he'd pull us out of relegation. Oh, do me a favour! <laughs> I saw that as well. Give me a red wobble. Oh, as much as we love Dino, in management, I don't think so. I, Ask East all how that went. Ask East all how that went. He That's might say there was yeah. something else, you know, to do with that. But, you know, regardless. Yeah, it's not... I don't think, yeah, that's not an option that I would really think that, <laughs> you know, is worth exploring. No. I mean, there's there's three games left. I mean, it would it would seem that, you know, the majority of City fans want McCann out. Who do you get in at this particular point if that did happen? Again, can't see it happening. Can't see it happening. We've left it too long. Yeah, if we're going to do it, I think uh, I think it was uh, Tom Griffin on Twitter had said if he, he should have walked after the Stoke defeat, mm. and that was pretty humiliating. Um, yeah. But obviously, Stoke have found form since the the season's resumed, but they are still only four points ahead of us. Yeah, big win today though. It was. 
it's very tight down there, I will say, because you've got, you know, if we win, if we win against Wigan and other results do go our way, which again isn't a, isn't a banker, we go up to 48 points, which takes us to 19th. So, you know, you've got what Barn, I mean, Barn, Barnsley are the one with the, the weakest form compared to us, I think, as well. They, they're, they're doing particularly, they can't score to save the life at the minute. Um, playing City. <laughs> well, yeah, it's true. I mean, they were the only beat one nil, but it was that was. I think that was one of the worst games I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, over their last twelve, Barnsley's form is still better than ours. Yes, yeah, but I mean, it was isn't because I think we're bottom of the form table completely. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, but... and if you look at who we're, we're gonna have to play, they have a big say in who goes down. Yeah, they do because they play Charlton. But equally, you could say we had that say as well because we've oh, played Charlton. We play Luton. We play Charlton. We play Middlesbrough. We've got Wigan to come. Birmingham even can get dragged into that, and we've played them. Yeah. So, um, so well, the only ones we haven't played in the bottom three since we've resumed is is well, Barnsley. We've got Luton to play, and then Huddersfield had already played the two games, haven't we? Mm. Then we're stuck. So yeah, no points. Yep. Huddersfield. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, how, what what? It's a, it's almost a foregone conclusion because we are almost thinking, well, we're not going to win there. But I it's, didn't think we'd score three goals away at Birmingham, and we did. But it oh, just feels different, doesn't it? it? It feels quite final now. It just feels like we're expecting to not get another point, and mm. both Barnsley and Luton go above us. And whether whether there's a Points deduction for Wigan, they'll probably still pick up nine points for the last three games, so it may mean they're safe, even if they get the points taken off, they may even be out of the bottom three, which would be remarkable considering. I think the um, thing that goes against us as well, at, 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 you know, in this unique um, end to a season, mm. is it's that the games are so close to each other. So if you are playing with you know, form and momentum's with you. You can't yeah, wait for you... your next game to come. If it's two or three right. days later, you know, fantastic. You've still got that great feeling. Whereas if it's, you know, the boots on the other foot like us and you're losing and everything's misery, mm. you almost want that time to kind of like go to ground a little bit and, and get on the training ground and try things out. And I can't see that the players are getting that opportunity to, to work on things. You know? One of the things McCann said to Burnsy after the, during the interview was that the game's come thick and fast and, and there's no time for recovery. Well, actually, I mean, he contradicts himself there because he plays a different fucking team each week, each game. <laughs> it's not like he's going, oh, we would stick with the same 11 and they're, they're knackered because we've only played these 11. That's not true. He's making three or four changes every single game, isn't he? Mm. He's either swapping ease for for McGuinness, or he's putting, he's, he's dropping Scott, he's dropping Terrell, he's bringing Bowler in. His Wilkes has always been a, a starter, in fairness. And then you know Honeyman's only played the last three; he hadn't played the others. He'd only come on a sub, and that was because Kane's been injured. Herbie Kane's a big loss, isn't he? You know, um, but I can't see us getting anything at Wigan. I don't know about you. No, it doesn't matter what team we play. I just don't ever see us scoring. Either. I can't. No, they've, they've conceded three in the last six. <laughs> <laughs> we conceded three in one game against Birmingham. And yeah. that was a, a game that we we absolutely battered them first half and should have won. Yeah, and the, the other thing is, you know, we've seen it here in, you know, years gone by where you've, <clears throat> you're on a... Your, your finances or your finances have gone against you. You know, they're in administration and, and it's it has a galvanizing effect. They'll be playing for each other now, those lads. Yeah. You can't say the same about us because half of our team's not going to be here next year. Well, clearly, so, you know, they've only signed extensions, some of them. They're not signed contracts for next season, have they? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that'll have an effect. And then. In a strange sort of a way, it's not, you don't want to see those players at Wigan get punished in a way for something that is, just sounds like it's completely, you know, completely wrong what's happened there. I mean, it, it but, takes me back to, you know, when we were at school and City before Pearson. Um, 
you know, being locked out the ground and then and Hinchcliffe and Buchanan and that, you know, when we had Rodney Rowe on all those weeks ago and he was talking about, you know, the only, he wasn't getting paid. Yeah. Like the players were not being paid because there was no money and, you know, it was um, supporters having a whip round that, we can, that give we, him we, a 50 quid here and there. And We're going to have him to sell players to make sure that their wages can be met. That's right. I mean, I do think, you know, I know football's very very tribal, but mm. the peop the people who are celebrating the fact that we can get twelve points taken off need to have a look at themselves in my eyes because that's not that's not the dumb thing in my eyes. I think, you know, when no, having but... been there to wish Let's... a club to go down because of, of a financial decision like that where it's got really no bearing on those fans even. It's the let's fans be, that let's be straight about it as well. If some minor miracle happens and we do end up staying up at Wigan's expense. You'd be relieved that City had survived. There'd be no joy in the fact that Wigan go down, but also I wouldn't no. be happy about City staying up in a funny That's sort a, of a way. We hadn't deserved to. Because it would feel as much it's, like the delaying like default, of the inevitable. It? it feels default. And also... If we go next into season. next season... Yeah, if we go into next season... Miserable as fuck. Can you, can you honestly say it's going to be... Can you foresee an improvement? No, I can't. that's the other thing with the manager. You know, when when things have gone this badly for somebody, how how often the managers have a season this horrible and turn it around the next? No. Whether that's because they're afforded the opportunity or not, you know, it's very rare that a manager could go on a run like Grant McCann's had with us since January mm. and and survive. I I don't think it happens that often. No. But equally, you can't say the ones that do. They don't suddenly turn it around, and you know, with the budget that's going to be his, his disposal, just can't see it. So, were we to survive this year, you'd almost have like a it's just, like survivors' guilt about it. Also, a bit delaying the inevitable because we'd go down the year after. Yeah, I'm not saying that I want us to go down no, this no. year. You know, don't get me no, wrong, but I can't see any positives even from staying up because I just think it'd no. be miserable that next season. We wouldn't have the players, we don't have the budget. You'd end up playing after twenty threes, which obviously good to see yeah, the I mean, Academy J- players come through, but it's a big Jacob jump. Greaves and Max Max Sheaf are going to be first team players for us next year, aren't they? Well it seems like it. I mean they've been what the on loan at Cheltenham, was it? Cheltenham, yeah. Um and that's League Two, isn't it? So yeah. that's that's their grounding and that's and that's fair play. I mean You've got other players on there that, you know, maybe will will go into the first team as well. But in the, with the head of um, the the academy leaving, that's that's also a, a big negative. Where you, you you've got somebody who's not in a position to to work with the manager to say these are the these are the perfect players for this position. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know who they're going to get. I presume Dorse will take temporary charge of the. Academy for a while because he's involved in that, isn't he? But yes, yeah, he is. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, it, like you say, even if we do stay up, I don't. It's kind of like a hollow I victory, and don't see it getting any better. No. Don't see it's kicking on next year. No, you know, no. The only thing, I mean, I was going to say the only thing is if we stay up, it might be more attractive to buyers. But let's be honest, it's not happening, is it? it doesn't look <laughs> like it, mate. I mean, that yeah. that would be the only silver lining within the cloud that if we did stay up, people would go hey, do you know what, not a bad team there and forget, you know, if we actually be, get Ehab to, to sell to somebody who's you know, willing to to fund the club and, and, and to back it and, and to attract players to compete then, then you would be more optimistic for next season but that doesn't seem likely, does it? No. So, I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't think there's anything else to add. In fairness, I think we've got to the end of the episode, and I, I, I don't really have that much hope for Wigan. I want to be really surprised. I want to see us, you know, kick on and and give our Chelsea a chance of, of survival, a shot in the arm by winning. But I can't see it happening. No, I can't. I can't even see a scoring. I, I don't know if he's going to go three four three again. I presume it'll be back to square one and. Playing a centre back at right back and and everything else, and I just don't think it's it's going to be anything that's going to be pretty to watch either, because they drew no, with, drew with Barnsley, didn't they? Nil nil. Yeah, nil nil. Which 
But you know, things being pretty to watch hasn't dissuaded me from. No, it doesn't dissuade. It down every doesn't game. dissuade us from watching it, does it? But it's done. Done. Feel Although, good, does it? I, I think if I was anybody, uh, if I was one of the carbo cutouts in the ground yesterday, I'd have been asking for my money back. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, on that really positive note, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time to call yeah. it a day. So, thanks for everyone for getting involved, and obviously, thanks for thanks for Rich and your opinions in this episode. It's uh, obviously it's whatever they're worth. Yeah, yeah, it's um, something that we still enjoy having a chat about City, but it really does seem to be getting more and more negative by the week and I don't know well not even not even by well, the week by is the it day. by every two or three days by the day um, so I mean we'll see what the Wigan game brings but I can't see it's going to be anything positive I want to be proved wrong but hey for, love to be proven wrong for the Tigers yeah so until next time <laughs> see you soon see you